brings me a lot of joy. I, I gave Nick a little test to see if he wants to be a priest, so I had him read that. Uh, have you ever just wished, God, if you just do a big miracle, then I, I think these people that I love will get it. <laughs> you ever wish that? I wish a big miracle would happen for my niece or my brother or my cousin. Well, sometimes uh, people see without seeing, or we, sometimes hear without hearing. And so we want to develop a spiritual hearing and a spiritual seeing. Uh, the rich man had Lazarus at his door all the time. It says at the end of the gate, really, at the gate in front. Now, in the Greek, it's a passive verb, which is to say that Lazarus was thrown at the door. That's what the text really says. Lazarus was thrown there. So it implies that it wasn't his choice, that it's something he suffered. But every day the rich man had to see him with his physical eyes. Going out, coming in, there he is. But he didn't see him with the heart. And then it's very interesting, now he's in Sheol. Where were the people when they died, before Jesus died? They were in Sheol, okay? They were under underworld or the netherworld. When we pray in the creed, we believe Jesus descended into hell. What we're really saying is he descended into Sheol. Okay, so it's a transliteration of that word. Well, they thought they'd go into the ground down there. You know, it's in dark down there. And, but somehow the good and the bad must be separated. And so in Sheol, Abraham takes poor Lazarus to his bosom. A sign of affection, a sign of love, a sign of tenderness, mercy. But the other is suffering, the rich man is suffering. And, uh, and now he says, he thinks, okay, if you just rise from the dead for my brothers, then they'll believe. And Abraham says something very interesting. He says, well, actually, if they don't believe the Bible, if they don't believe the prophets, if they don't believe Moses, they won't even believe someone rise from the dead. Now, he could have said, but you know what, dude? I did, Jesus could have said, Jesus told the story. You know, Jesus told this story. Jesus could have said, I did that. I did that. And in fact, the guy I raised from the dead, his name was Lazarus. Dude, I raised a guy from the dead named Lazarus. But Lazarus sat at the door of the rich man. And the rich man thinks, if someone rises from the dead, they'll all believe. <laughs> you see all the intricacies of this? Well, to hear the scriptures and not be affected, I would have to assume that his relations heard Moses and heard the prophets because Abraham says, if they don't listen to them, they won't believe anyway. Sometimes I really wish God would do a miracle that people would like believe, right? But there's something inside that God says, I give so much already in my living word. I give so much in the witnesses of you and in all the counts of Jesus' life. Uh, so the rich man is now suffering and, and Lazarus has a kind of reward. Well, this week we're going to celebrate a beautiful saint on Tuesday. And her name is St. Teresa, the little flower. Uh, or St. Teresa of Lisieux. It's in France. And my floor, fourth floor upstairs, the RA chose St. Teresa as our patron for the year on our floor. So we're going to read part of her biography this year, which is called The Story of a Soul. Her older sister was prioress at one time and said, you have to write your biography. And so she said, well, I'll do it under obedience. I don't want to, but she did it. It's called The Story of a Soul. It's a very holy family. The father and mother had nine children. Four of them died young. We don't see that much today, but back then, late 1800s, four died young. Five daughters left. They all went into religious life. They all went into religious life. And Teresa was the third. So her older sister, Pauline, was prior, said, you've got to write your story. She said, I don't want to. I says, well, tough, I'm, I'm prior, so you're going to do it. <clears throat> and in this story, we learn about what's called the little way. The little way. And what it is, is every little small unit 
all, be it so ordinary, can be so beautiful and extraordinary. And so sometimes, for example, one of her sisters in choir would have her long rosary. And by the way, I have a gift for you next week. I have a gift for all of you. I'm so excited to give it to you. You're going to be flipping out. So you got to come next week, okay? And bring your friends because I got enough for everybody. Okay, so, so some of the sisters in choir when they pray have these long rosaries and they're constantly dangling, dangling and making noise, you know, like... And they're trying to pray and they can get so annoyed by this little thing. And St. Teresa the Little Flower would say, you know what, I'm not going to get ignored. I'm not going to get annoyed by this sister. Or believe it or not, sometimes she'd say, a wo- one of the sisters would wash too loudly. Like everybody would know she's washing, you know? And maybe she ever wanted everyone to know she didn't like it. But she would say, I would forbear in love. I wouldn't let myself be annoyed. And then sometimes she would, uh, she would deny herself a little kind of uh, pleasure. And, and we think of, you know, big pleasures. But this would be a little pleasure for her. A jug of water that was like a really beautiful jug that had beautiful painted flowers on it and was nicely crafted, you know, uh, ceramic kind of thing. And she would say, I'd really like to use that beautiful painted flowered water jug today. But then she'd say, no, I'm going to take this jug over here that's kind of cracked. And she said, I'm going to use that jug today to kind of deny herself. A little thing, a very little thing. And then most famously, there was one sister uh, who always had sort of bad breath. And, uh, and, and other sisters, no one really liked being with her. And uh, every time Teresa would see her, she would smile. She'd make herself smile. And so I know when the seminarians smile every time they see me what's really going on. Uh, but hers is called the little way, and it was all these little units, every day little units, that she could find Christ in another and serve God, serve God. Now that's a great contrast to the rich man who was all about self and couldn't recognize the opportunity at his doorstep. I could love this Lazarus. Well, okay, so today, I, I invite you on Tuesday to ask for St. Teresa's intercession for you and for those you love. She loves to give roses from heaven. And uh, you'll always see her with roses. If you ask her to, to give you a sign, she'll give you a rose, okay? Then you come back and you tell me. You tell me what color rose she gave you, all right? Okay, next week a gift. God bless you.